our planet, the Earth, has a lot of heat inside. And before the crust was formed, that heat could be easily and gently released towards the outside. But once we have this thin crust, most of the heat can only be released by breaking the crust and allowing hot magma to reach the surface. Mount Etna is located along the eastern coast of Sicily, which is an island in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. Etna is one of the largest active volcanoes in the world. Its surface is about 1,100 square kilometers, and its maximum altitude is 3,300 meters above the sea level. It's a huge mountain. Mount Etna has four summit craters. However, eruptions do not only take place from the summit craters. There are eruptions which start from fractures opened uh, along the flanks of the volcano. Of course, Mount Etna has many villages along its flanks so that means that the opening of a fracture along the flank can affect buildings, roads, and so on. So we need a continuous monitoring because even if the volcano appears apparently quiescent, there's always a dynamics inside which can help us a lot in the forecast of future activity. Magma comes to the surface because it has a special engine, which is gas. This is one of the automated stations that we use to measure the flux of sulfur dioxide that is emitted by the volcano every day. The SO2 amount in a volcanic plume is very important to us because it tells us when magma is coming to the surface and how much magma is possibly coming to the surface. To give an example, uh, before the last eruption, which started on May 13, 2008, we had a steady increase in the SO2 emission from the craters of Mount Etna, which reached its highest point the very day when the eruption started. I also measure the flux of carbon dioxide, which is the most important magmatic gas being released by Etna through its flanks. We are here along a, one of the major faults that cut the eastern flank of Mount Etna. And uh, along this fault, we have huge emissions of carbon dioxide. So when we observe increases in the emissions of carbon dioxide, we know that some magma is coming to the surface. And because the source is located at a depth between five and seven kilometers, this is an early indicator that something is going to happen on the volcano. After placing the accumulation chamber on the soil surface, I can see now the concentration of carbon dioxide, which is 91.33 grams of carbon dioxide per square meter per hour. It's among the highest ever measured in this site in the last five years. So, this is a clear indication that there is a lot of pressure inside the magma and there is a lot of magma probably rising towards the surface. 
we can measure not only the gas from special instruments, we can also have a monitoring of fluids within the volcano studying volcanic tremor. We have more than 78 seismic stations along the eastern coast of Sicily. More than 60% of them are located on Mount Etna. These stations are deployed all around the summit craters at different altitudes in order to reconstruct the movement of magma and fluids and see if there's a change of the position of the magma from depth to the surface. The signal uh, changed a little bit, so we can see some changes in amplitude and in the frequency content. And from this information, we can also have a, um, a location of the source uh, and its depth below the surface. <laughs> Thermal images are very useful to study the presence of a fracture which potentially can be the path for a magma towards the surface. Visually, you cannot note that there is an anomaly in the ground, but using thermal images, you can recognize this anomaly with an increase in the temperature and the difference in the color of the rocks. So using this information, you can define the regions which are potentially more dangerous. The temperature inside of the pit crater is normal. I think that the level of the magma is low at the moment. It's okay. The crater, some summit crater, it's okay. Our data are collected online and analyzed by automatic software in our control room in Catania. We put together all this information in order to have a 24 hours monitoring of the volcano. This means that we can forecast the place and of course in terms of probability, we can say also the time uh, in which this activity can evolve towards an eruption. Mount Etna produces at least one eruption per year, so it would be very easy to say in the next year we will have an eruption. But in reality we have many signs at the moment that there will be an eruption in the next weeks to a couple of months. Only when the seismic crisis that precedes eruption starts will we know that we have between 6 and 12 hours to say what the risks will be for the population.